Hey everyone and welcome to another Warframe video. So Prodman's been in the game for quite a while now, hiding in the index and spawning only after surviving for an hour in there. Normally, this requires a fairly decent group to go for because your weapon damage falls off. Most frames just aren't survivable enough to take a hit from a level 250 enemy, which is actually what you're fighting after an hour. Well, that's not necessary at all when you use a frame that's often forgotten to be existing, and that's because for the most part he isn't that great and that is Revenant. Now I can hear you scratching your heads in confusion. Revenant? How can he take a hit? Well it all comes down to his second ability Mesmer Skin. A damaging hit from an enemy gets completely absorbed and eats a charge of the skin while stunning the enemy that hit you. With a good build you can have 12 or so of these charges and since you only ever fight maybe like 5 enemies at once you can see just how strong this is going to be. There's just never enough enemies around to eat all your charges up unless you make a mistake and are not paying attention and let the charges run down. It's even stronger when you build for duration because that stun means they're no longer shooting at you, which means they're not consuming charges and allows you to pretty safely kill them off. In addition to that, enemies that drop AoE stuff like the Mine Ospreys, if you kill them, the mines that remain on the ground won't trigger any stacks of your Mesmer skin, unlike the a normal frame which will still take damage from them. AoE attacks as well, they don't take any more of your stacks of Mesmer skin while the, a the enemy is stunned. So all of this combined makes this one hell of a powerful skin and absolutely perfect for this. So we talked a little bit about the, the actual build, let's start with the Aura and the Exilus on Revenant. Personally I run enemy radar and the Aura to allow me know where, like, to know where the enemy are. Exilus, I would say, is a bit of personal preference. You can either run either Enemy Sense for more radar, which helps to kill pretty efficiently, or go for more power strength for your Mosma skin. The rest of the build's actually pretty self-explanatory though. Umbral Intensify, Energy Conversion, Augur Secrets to get as many charges as you can without sacrificing efficiency and duration. Narrow-minded and Prime Continuity for duration of the stun. Natural Talent to cast things faster and then Streamline and a Rank 3 Fleeting for efficiency. You can run a rank 4 fleeting if you want, but I like the extra 10% duration over the 5% efficiency, and anything more than rank 4 is just unnecessarily tanking your duration. Then it's just a case of making sure that you have your Mesmer skin up at all times. You will have like scary times where someone will just like randomly take all of your health away, take you all the way down to 2 HP. Normally it's something like the mower, like the orb mines you see on the floor, or the lasers from the ospreys that fly around. But if you're running Magus Elevate on your operator, you can just bring it back up again, just pop in and out of your operator a couple of times and heal yourself up. It's a bit of a weird thing, but you do need to keep an eye out for it. Obviously, it's all well and good being able to survive for an hour, which, yeah, Revenant can do super easily, but what's the point unless you have the weapons to do with the super high level enemies that you come up against? You can use sort of most sort of high damage uh, primary weapons. Snipers are by far the best for this stuff, like the Rubico Prime are going to do quite well for quite a while. But ultimately, they're all going to fall off after probably 40, 30, 40 minutes or so. So naturally, we need to go into a specific killing setup to be able to do this. For a high level killing, we're going to rely on status procking kit gun and a Zor dagger, which has proved to be probably the most efficient combination. Although you can definitely use whatever status, secondary and melee you want, they're just a bit likely to be like a little bit less efficient. The most important thing here is the use of Condition Overload. Condition Overload is going to multiply our damage for every status proc that's on the target, which even at 4 separate procs is really easy to do. You're getting over a 6.5 times damage multiplier only on 4 procs, so it really pushes your damage super super high. So that meant I end up building a specific status proccing machine. In my case, a specially constructed kit gun making use of rattle guts, ran flare and gibber parts to give high status and super high fire rate. So we can put as many procs onto the target as we can, especially when we mod it with all four jaw stats. That gives you 100% status, plus potentially five procs, including blast, which the Blast and the Knockdown of Blast actually count as two procs. So Blast procs count as two procs towards Condition Overload. And that actually gives us a total potential of six different procs on a target, giving us an insane 16.7 times damage multiplier on the target. 
Barrow Diffusion and Lethal Taran on there for the procs on the multi-shot. Lethal and Vile on there for fire rate to proc things super fast and to make things, you know, make killing as efficiently as possible at that higher level. Then, that was combined with the straight damage Dagger Zor to do the killing once all the procs are on. Using the Baller, the Corb, and the Vargeet to Ruang for maximum damage and crit chance, we just don't worry about status on this since our secondary already has done it for us. The build's pretty much straight damage too. Sacrificial Steel, which combines with Blood Rush for the extra crit chance. Covert Lethality, which combines with the Narrowmon ability to open enemies up to finishes when you dash through them. Plus the extra damage of from that mod too. Prime Fever Strike is just going to be our only damage mod on here. Because the straight toxin is going to bypass the shields that the Corpus have and hit straight to health. And that ignores part of their level scaling. That shield scaling you're just completely ignoring. We're also using an Exodia Contagion on here too. Because it has the enforced viral proc when you melee in the air while doing the aim glide. That adds yet another proc and lowers their health by half too. Stinging Thorn is yet another damage multiplier as well. Every single hit basically has a 3 times damage multiplier, as well as having guaranteed impact and slash procs as part of the combos, which helps reapply procs at higher level when the time to kill goes up. So as you can see, to kill efficiently at this really high level, it's about stacking as many multipliers as you possibly can. And that's pretty much all the build stuff. I know there's a lot of information in a short amount of time as I can manage, but the whole solo high risk prodman runs really are about a whole ton of things working in perfect synergy. That being said though, provided you're paying attention to what you're doing with Revenant, keeping an eye on his stacks, you can basically never die. His Mesma skin, which isn't that great in normal missions because it gets overwhelmed too quickly, is his greatest asset in this kind of run. Every time you're low, run to one of the energy swarms and recast your skin, refreshing all of the charges, and then get back into the fight again. Don't be afraid to give some large bursts of your secondary too, especially if you're using the um, the arcane that makes it so that they don't use ammo, you've just got to regen. With, with there being corrosive on that secondary weapon and it firing so fast, at that higher level, you can strip the entire armor of some of the robotic dudes like the Bursa super quickly, making it so much quicker to go down. Other than that, it's really pretty simple. After you've done this step, it's actually not that difficult. The only expensive part of this really is the Umbral mods, which you don't have them, you can replace them with mods that do something similar. There's a little room for maneuver with the frame build, plus the weapons that you use to pull off the condition overload combo. However, for this, it is this is pretty much as min-max you're going to get without going for super specific Riven builds. But I'm never going to show those because, honestly, they're almost impossible to replicate. Not everyone can get a squad together for doing Prodman runs. Not everyone enjoys playing with other people. And with this setup, you can breeze your way to Prodman without any issues whatsoever. I watched a couple of episodes of Sargate SG-1 while recording this earlier. That's how easy it actually is. So I hope this video helps you get those Prodman poses you've not, if you've not managed to get them before. Feel free to smash that like button and sub for some more Warframe content. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.